So in the most recent episode of Adventures in Angular, Dave Bush talked about using the app initializer multi-provider in an Angular application to load configuration data off of the remote server. And I thought this was super fascinating and is, uh, allows essentially the Angular application to become completely portable because it separates the configuration from the application logic. Now, in his article, he looked at the mechanics of the app initializer and loading the remote data. Um, and I then wanted to sort of uh, riff on that and look at how you would then maybe take that configuration data and use it to configure the rest of the Angular application. So as a uh, test case for this, I wanted to leverage the IP info API, which is a remote API uh, that allows you to geocode IP addresses. So if I hit enter here, you can see it goes out to the IP info IO and it uh, gets information about this IP address, right? If we look in here, we can see that it has geolocation information. Now the part of this that is relevant is that a token needs to be provided with every API call to IP info. And that token is of course associated with a subscription level and a rate limit. So we would certainly want to use a different IP info token in production, one that would have a very large rate limit, would probably be a large paid plan, uh, which would be different from what we would use in our local development environments, which would probably be a free plan with a much lower rate limit, because all we need to do is make sure that functionality works locally. It doesn't necessarily need to uh, be highly available and, uh, and, and scale well. So how do we get that Angular application to be aware of the token, but not have to hard code that token into the Angular application? That's where I want to look at the app initializer. So let's jump into the code and just quickly look at the service that geocodes or geolocates the IP address. So it's pretty simple. It's basically just a locate method here. You can see we configure the URL to go out to the IP info IO site. I get that value and I essentially de, uh, I essentially deserialize it and, and send it back through. Uh, but again, here's where we take that token and we send that through with every request. Now that API token is being provided outside of the geocode service and you can see as part of the constructor here, we're injecting the dependency injection token for IP info API key, and we're storing that internally. So in this sense, uh, the geocode service doesn't care where that API token comes from. It just needs to know that it's being provided as part of the constructor, and it's doing this in a way that isn't coupled to a concept of app initializers or any kind of a configuration service or any kind of like a, uh, definition service. It, it's, it's completely decoupled from the greater structure of the application because it's a fairly uh, self-contained service. So how do we take that remote data and use it to configure this IP info API key provider? Well, let's jump over into our app initializer. So the app initializer is going to be a service class that provides a load config function that goes to the server to get that app config JSON file. And it's going to do this as part of the app initializer, right? And this is essentially uh, right here, which is what uh, Dave covered in his article, right? We have our app initializer token that's provided by Angular. It's a multi-provider, which means that we can have many of these in the application. In fact, Angular actually has several that run already. And it is a factory function that returns a function that will itself return a promise. Uh, it doesn't matter what the result of that promise is, it only matters whether it uh, gets fulfilled or rejected, or resolved or rejected. Um, and it's going to call out to that load config. So it's going to essentially sit and block or defer the initialization of the application until this promise comes back and allows this greater promise for the async here to resolve. Now, the beautiful part about this is that all this is doing is loading the remote configuration into this public property of my app initializer. Now the app initializer is both the provider of that load config method, but it's also going to be the provider of a service within the greater Angular application, which means that after we've provided our app initializer, we can provide our IP info API key token and then use the application initializer as a dependency for that factory function. So this factory function can then take that app initializer, pull out the config 
that we loaded from the remote server, pull out the IP info section, and then provide the API token as, again, this IP info API key. This is then the dependency injection token that the geocode service is using to uh, define its constructor signature. Now, this works because the Angular dependency injection container performs lazy evaluation, meaning that it won't attempt to instantiate a service until it's actually required by the application. So if our application is going to be blocking and deferring initialization until this load config promise completes, it means that there's nothing in the application that's actually going to make use of the IP info API key until after the app initializer has become available as a service provider. So the lazy evaluation allows us to essentially load the remote configuration as part of the app initializer and then use the app initializer to then subsequently and dynamically configure the providers for other services. So one of the beautiful things about factory functions is essentially that we don't need to know all of the configuration at compile time, right? Factory functions allow us to defer configuration decisions until right before a service becomes instantiated. And that wiggle room allows us time to pull data off of the remote server and use it to configure the rest of the application. And the reason that that's so great is because, again, going back to our geocode service, is it completely decouples the concept of the geocode service from the architecture of the application. Right? The geocode service doesn't know anything about the app initializer. It doesn't know anything about the lazy evaluation. It doesn't know anything about where the API token is coming from. It only cares that there's an API token argument as part of its constructor, and it leaves all of the decision-making and the bootstrapping and the wiring together of the services as an external constraint of the dependency injection container that is the Angular application. And I don't know, when I see this working, I'm just like, oh my God, Angular is amazing. I don't know how people don't look at this and they're not just blown away. So um, I guess as a final thing, uh, I would just point out that my app initializer file here exports this uh, array of providers. And then inside the app module, uh, I'm just including that array of providers into the, uh, to the modules here. And again, just going back to the app here, I can come in here, I can change these things. And you can see that uh, this is, in fact, a live demo doing actual things. So um, anyway, uh, I just wanted to build on top of Dave's app initializer exploration for the remote configuration and really take his, his thought work and, and extend it to then say, well, now how do we take that configuration data and actually merge it into the application such that we can keep our services well uh, well decoupled, uh, but also dynamic based on the remote data.